So on today's show, our guest is Phil Morettini. He has spent much of his career working in technology businesses from product marketing to business development, sales management, and general management. In 2001, with 20 years of experience in high-tech businesses, he started PJM Consulting. It helps tech and software companies develop overall strategies and provides tactical programs to improve revenue generation and profitability rapidly. Thank you for joining us today, Phil. John, thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, I know you're a busy guy, so I want to just get into it and tell us a little bit about yourself and how do people know you by? Like, what do they know you by? Well, how do people know me by? Wow, that's a, that's a, seems like a simple question. Um, I'm not sure I know how to answer that perfectly. Uh, I would say people know me probably most uh, since I've been a, a consultant in the technology business for the last 20 years. They probably know me most by my, my blog. So I, I, I write a blog that uh, has new, con- new fresh content for myself every month. They probably know me best from that. Um, so I'm pretty active out there in, um, you know, much as you are in, in, in trying to get the word out on my business through, you know, providing help to people through a variety of means and, and uh, you know, variety of content types out there. But, um, you know, what, what, what my career and my business has all been about has, has really, uh, since the very early stage at least, uh, been, uh, you know, helping technology businesses. And I started working in very large technology businesses, um, some very good ones, uh, by the way. But I found that um, for myself, I, I, I just was much better suited for smaller and smaller businesses. So I kind of went down down the road in smallness until I hit uh, one, which is where I'm at now, which is the ultimate small business. So uh, I provide um, a variety of services, as you mentioned, um, primarily to technology businesses, hardware, software, SaaS, mobile software. Um, but a lot of the things I do really are very, um, very much applicable to any kind of business. So. No, that's great. Well, so tell me a little bit, how did you start your business and, you know, even, even the early days, your career path, right? Um, sure. Because ultimately, how did you derive to where you are today? Because people want to hear your journey. Yeah, well, that's, um, that is a little interesting. So I didn't set out to be a consultant, never thought I would be. Probably the, you know, the term consultant was probably a little bit of a dirty word to me, like it is to, to some other people, um, you know, uh, all the jokes about consultants uh, that you hear over, over your, your years in, in business. But um, ba- basically, I was running um, technology businesses, and um, I had a personal situation where I have a a son with special needs, actually. And uh, when he was diagnosed, um, there was, it was fairly traumatic for our family and uh, actually demanded a lot of things for us to do that, that involved him. So I found it actually kind of convenient and, and uh, better for my career to, to uh, start my consulting business so I could be, you know, I, I run it out of a home office so that I could have more flexibility in my personal life and, um, and, and be around the house when I needed to be. And um, so that's really how it started. Um, I didn't set out to be a consultant. I thought I'd do it for a few years, but um, I really found that, you know, I enjoy it. I, I hit my stride and I just kind of kept going. And, and you look back 20 years later and, and it's, it's what you're doing. So, you know, sometime you choose a path in life and sometime it chooses you. And um, either can work, you know, because there's a lot of things that go on in anybody's life that affects their career path. Yeah, no, that that means a lot, right? Because you don't, a lot of people have this dream and, you know, they've always wanted to be their own boss or whatever it may be, but life gets in the way, right? And, you know, you overcame that situation by accommodating with picking a job or a business that you know, met your needs. Right. right. And that's very important uh, for all the audience members because sometimes it, it's the best way to run a business because it's, it's like a choice, but it actually is the best choice for you at that time. 
yeah. right? Um, so how has things evolved since? Like, it sounds like you're obviously enjoying what you're doing because Absolutely. you've been doing it for 20 years. Right. Um, how has it grown since then? Because you have a lot more experience than some of these uh, new entrepreneurs thinking of starting. For sure. Right. So the way it evolved is, you know, initially, um, I didn't know that I was going to do it for 20 years. So you, you, when you think, when you're not sure if you're going to continue down this path or, or, you know, maybe go back and, you know, run a software business or be an employee somewhere or what have you, um, you probably don't plan in the same way as, as you do if it's, you've decided to do something. So it was probably several years in that I decided, well, this, this is going to be my career from here on in. And um, at that point, I really started getting serious and I built a website. And um, a few years after that, I started my blog, which is a big part of um, kind of my identity. So, um, you know, once you've decided that uh, this is going to be your permanent business, you think about building your brand and you think about, you know, how do I scale this up so that it really, you know, becomes a full time business and, and kind of, uh, you know, perpetuates itself as opposed to just going to get a couple consulting assignments because, you know, that's, you know, where you're at in your life. So I have, uh, you know, for the last probably 15 to 16 years, really, uh, you know, focused on building my PGM consulting brand. And, you know, part of that is, is doing the same types of things that you're doing with your business, which is providing a lot of free um, help to people out there. And the, the main, the main um, avenue I do that is by writing blog articles and, and repurposing them and, you know, putting them out on social media and that sort of thing. So that is the, that is the focus of my promotion um, currently, at least. No, that's, that's great points because even early on when I started this company, um, I didn't know if it was going to be a success or not. So I put in a time and I started getting some clients and things started you know, snowballing and I was enjoying it. So before you know it, then you had to really focus on what are my core values? What is my mission? What is my goal? What are my go to market strategies, right? Like, unless you are running it as a tech company where you have a lot of funding or have something where someone's backing you, Right. Um, when you're doing it yourself, you probably don't have a lot of funding or savings, right? You're kind of doing it out of necessity or whatever drives you, right? So That's right. Um, it all depends on where you're at or who, you know, what kind of business you're running. But um, I could definitely relate to what you've done with your business because as long as you're loving what you do, uh, it doesn't really feel like work because like you mentioned, 20 years, how fast did that fly by? Like, because I'm only in six years and I, I now look back and I'm like, wow, I've already been doing it for six years. It's incredible, right? Like you say, John, I think it flies by when you're enjoying it, you know, and uh, I think our businesses, um, you know, you're, you're in a different part of the tech business, but you're still in the tech business, in, in my opinion. So I think the tech business is so dynamic and there's so many things going on, uh, constantly changing that, that it really... It helps keep you fresh because, you know, SEO now is very, you know, has changed from the way it was six years ago, right? It's not a stagnant situation. And, you know, when I look at the changes that have happened in, you know, small business and startup marketing and and specifically in the technology space over the 20 years that I've been in it, you know, dramatic changes in terms of uh, not only the technologies, but the the tactics and the platforms and all those sorts of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's going to be a question specific to that later on in our okay. podcast. Um, but I wanted to ask you, so uh, were there people that you kind of looked up to uh, growing up um, to inspire you to pace what you're doing? For you? Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah. So, um, so people that inspired me, I would say my parents probably inspired me um, more than anyone. Um, I have, uh, you know, my background is I'm a, a second generation American. So my grandfather came over on a boat with uh, many people, you know, of his generation and, um, you know, worked in a coal mine and, and, you know, and he did it all for his family so that, you know, 
his his children could have a better life. And, and my parents kind of took up the same thing. So I saw them sacrifice a lot to, you know, help me through college and, you know, you know, their, their, their children were everything to them. So, you know, they did everything they could for them. So I think that was probably my biggest influence is a very strong, uh, you know, sense of uh, who you should be, you know, to be a person of integrity and honest and, you know, all those basic core values that you, you kind of take for granted, but not everybody, unfortunately, has, you know, maybe the, the home life that stimulates that like, like my family did. So that, that's probably my biggest influence. No, that's great. I mean, family is the strongest pillar, right? Um, but again, certain situations, um, you know, some people are coming from a, a challenged family or without exactly. uh, a figure, right? One of the other parents. So um, they look up to influences like mentors or other people they may look up to, right? Um, so I can definitely relate like, you know, me seeing my family going through the challenges and doing whatever they need to, to support the family. Right. So right. that bond right there, um, you know, those integrity, those invaluable lessons of life right. are things that hold you and mold you. Right. right. So right. really good points. Um, so in terms of uh, growing up, did you have a dream job growing up or? Oh yes, absolutely. So what was that like? Well, shortstop for the Chicago Cubs. That was my dream. I think it's probably time to give up on that given my age <laughs> and the fact that I'm left-handed and, you know, couldn't hit a 90 mile an hour fastball is probably not going to happen at this point. So, uh, you know, the technology business has been a fun second, but that was definitely uh, the dream uh, as a little guy. Nice. Um, and then during the years that you've uh, changed your career, like um, pivoting from yes. job employee to management to starting your business, um, how did that come about? And what kind of challenges did you have to face over from that? Yeah, so I would say there were a couple major pivots in my career. Um, I actually started my career as an engineer in old industrial companies in the Midwest. I'm from the Midwest originally. So um, I, uh, I was a guy that probably complained about cold weather. Um, you know, from the time I could talk, it was probably after mama and dada, it was probably the next thing was a complaint about how cold it was. <laughs> so, um, and also um, I went through a couple of recessions and in, 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 in the, the industrial companies tend to go through, they tend to go through them kind of hard, went through a couple of those. And um, so I, I actually made a shift in my career at about four years in where I switched my uh, location from the Midwest to Southern California. Nice. I switched industries from, uh, you know, automotive and heavy industrial to uh, electronics and software and functional areas from engineering to marketing and eventually general management all in one fell swoop when I moved to San Diego a number of years ago. So that was, that was a very big change. A lot of, lot of life changes at once and uh, I've never regretted it really. So, so that was one, um, one pivot. And you, you asked about my influences and my mentors. So there, there have been a number of people that, that have been, you know, influences along the way, but, when you speak specifically about um, what has influenced my philosophies about managing um, a business, uh, my first employer in the technology business was Hewlett Packard. And this was back in the eighties. It was a great company back then. And um, this was an $8 billion company at the time and it had all the attributes of that, but also in many ways felt like a small startup. And I think that was one of the most remarkable management jobs um, that, that Bill uh, Hewlett and David Packard did. Um, th so they, their philosophies, um, you know, the, what was called the HP way back at HP, um, had a really strong influence on my thinking about how to build businesses that, that, that thrive and last. Um, so I adopted many of their um, principles uh, throughout my career. No, that's amazing because it's so hard for an entrepreneur to understand how corporate culture is and how they strive and are successful unless you're in it, right? right. Um, and it's, it's the best life lesson out there. You should be working where 
you want to kind of learn. And over the years, and when you're ready to be an entrepreneur, that's when you take that step, right? So right. you've gone through it and you've actually learned a lot of different industries and been in different industries and different kind of career jobs as well, from engineer to marketing to management. I mean, those are huge pivots, right? They are. They are. <laughs> and learning all that. And obviously learning, as long as you're motivated to continue learning and you should never stop learning because I continue to learn every day. Absolutely. Um, so all these things are so val big, valuable points. And um, I come from a very similar situation. I worked at Yellow Pages where I learned their process and their systems and how they treated their staff and what worked for team meetings and, you know, just all those things that were kind of ingrained in me that I didn't really think of. Right. Now I can actually use it for my own purpose and make it mold it the way I want to mold it. Right. Like right, exactly. the cons of everything. Right. Yeah. There's always things that you see that you say, I definitely don't want to do it that exactly. way. Right? <laughs> exactly. Right. But, I mean, the good thing is you were actually in it just like myself. Right. And you saw firsthand what worked and what didn't work. So yes. um, it's a little bit different than reading or watching or yes. anything online. Right. Like unless you're actually in it, that's right. It's a different story, right? I think one of the big lessons is that uh, I see small businesses that are very anxious to be big businesses, and they think the way to do that is to emulate big businesses. <laughs> and actually, in most cases, it's the opposite. Yes. Um, shouldn't be in a hurry to, you know, get bureaucratic and have a lot of process and those kind of things where you'll never get there. And that was one of the lessons that uh, Hewlett and Packard really kind of gave me, even though I never met them personally, is that they really were attempting to keep that small company environment as long as possible. Yeah. And I think the good thing is you, you form smaller groups and relationships that are very strong bonded and they work better together as opposed to a large company, which you're associated as a number, right? right. You're associated exactly. versus, you know, personalized people actually care and want to help each other grow. Yeah. Right? Um, so those are really good points. Thank you. Um, so in terms of like some of the biggest challenges that you faced over the years, um, how did you overcome them? And were there inspiration? Like were there people that helped you up or how did you get through it? Yeah. So I'm probably one of my career lessons is I probably should have gotten more help from other people than I did. So um, and that's probably one of my, my own personal flaws is, you know, as I look back at it now and I'm helping people in that role, um, probably would have, uh, you know, been in my uh, favor if I would have sought out people more to, to fill that role when I, back when I was a young manager. But, um, you know, there was a lot of challenges. You know, I went through some very tough times, and, you know, recessions, things of that nature. Uh, one, I, would, I, I think that... that um, probably a lot of your audience can relate to was um, back in the early 80s, I started up a, um, a, a commercial software business within uh, here in San Diego with, with, within what, what was a defense services business at the time. And it, they were about a $50 million business, 500 people. So kind of a medium sized company. Um, and uh, you know, they, uh, they wanted to sell the company eventually and their, their, their bankers were telling them, well, if you had products and if you had commercial stuff, it would be worth X amount of times per revenue dollar. And as defense yeah. services, you're only getting a fraction of that. So they wanted to reinvest their free cash flow to something that was going to be higher value. And so I came in and kind of looked at a bunch of stuff that they had and, and we formed a business off a couple of products that, that were, had been in, developed internally, not, not fully developed, but partially developed. And so um, I was running this, embryonic uh, business unit of this company and essentially taking all their free cash flow. And it was, you know, from their point of view, going down the drain because we were losing it all, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, as a startup, it would, you know, we, we were yeah. using them as the bank basically. And, and um, so that went on for a while and they were getting very nervous. Uh, understandably the, the defense services business isn't the type of business where you make big upfront investments. So this was not something that they were, you know, used to doing or necessarily comfortable doing, even though they set out to do it. So um, we were losing a lot of money and my boss was coming in every two weeks, 
pretty much given me a speech that, uh, you know, they're going to have another meeting and they might shut it down. And, uh, you know, so it was a very stressful time. I was working 100 hour weeks trying to make this work. I, it was a big opportunity to really, to really make something out of nothing. It was my first time really in a startup situation. Yep. And, um, you know, I guess what I found was that if you kept looking at the big picture, it was so bleak that it would just paralyze you. So what I did was I just worked hard and I focused on what was in front of me that day. And all I can do is what I can do today, right? And then tomorrow will be another day. I'll get up and we'll go at it harder again. And um, through convincing them to be a little more patient and um, showing them, you know, what, how we were going to, you know, get this thing going. Um, I bought a little time and um, basically told them, you know, that we, we had brought out a, a first generation software application and um, it wasn't selling very well, but I could tell that the market loved the idea. It was unique. No one else had it. Mm. And so it just, the product just didn't work well enough. Mm. So I convinced the company that when we, when we uh, were going to, bring out the second version, I told them that sales were going to quadruple overnight. That was a pretty bold statement. <laughs> Luckily, they did. They oh. quadrupled. As soon as we did the release, revenue literally went step function up 400%. Nice. So that, that bought me a little credibility and some more time. And, and we continued to work on distribution and marketing and you know just getting a little better at everything every day. Um, and worked on the third generation and I told them, Hey, when this third one comes out, we're going to quadruple again overnight, two bold predictions and, you know, beginner's luck. I don't know what it was. Stupidity. The third version came out and we quadruple sales again. And so now we're, you know, we're, we're profitable. Things are going well. And I could look back and, you know, we, we built a nice profitable business out of, out of nothing. Um, and, you know, having gone through a lot of hard times to get there, that was probably the most difficult situation in my career. And one of the most fulfilling, you know, we could have been shut down any time and the story would have been very different. Um, but luckily they had enough patience and belief that uh, we made it through and created a, a very profitable business for the company. I mean, when you're, you know, backed up to the edge and, you know, when you don't have no funding and you just got to do what you got to do. Right. So I love that story because, um, you know, the big thing is every person has to endure some challenges, right. To be successful, you have to fall down multiple times, right. right. Or feel that you need to make it happen. Right. So instead of folding, which you didn't do, you plugged away. Right. And that's entrepreneurship, right? Like right. there's so many nights and evenings and days and weeks that, you know, you, you just feel like, why are you doing this? Right. So that just bodes well for you as an entrepreneur now, right? Like you've been doing it for 20 years and you know, that experience alone will show that you're going to be doing something and you're going to love it and you're going to follow through with whatever goals you have. Right. So, yeah. It gives you a lot of confidence to, to go through the, something like that and come out on the other end. I think you can even learn more through failure, but you don't want it to all be failure. Yeah. I, one, one of the things I learned out of that is there, there's an old saying in, in, in you know, startup tech that um, you know, being successful sometime is just being able to hang around long enough to get lucky. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, luck plays a role in any business. It's, it's not the only factor, certainly hard work and smarts and you know and and all the things that go into a good business are important but a little bit of luck never hurts yeah but I, again i hear that term a lot and i think you know there's a lot of things that make it not lucky and you got to be proud of all the other intangible stuff that you did absolutely yeah. you can't control the luck part exactly um so in terms of um you know that's challenges and some of the mistakes, but how about advice? Um, what can you give some of the audience members in terms of uh, three pieces of advice that now that you've been doing uh, your, your business for over 20 years, uh, consultant business, um, what can you tell people? So I think that 
one of them is kind of illustrated from that story is that you just can't give up, you know, especially if you're running your own business or it's a startup, it's early stage, there's going to be challenges. Um, you just really need to put your head down and, and keep going. That would be that would be one thing, you know, that's the classic entrepreneurial personality that you, you have to have to really be successful in a startup because you'll hit a wall and you'll quit if you don't have that attitude. But do you give it enough time as well as an entrepreneur? Right. You know, you could be bleeding for years. How much time right. can you actually commit? Yeah. You know, that's a tough one. I've actually written a couple articles about, I, I wrote an article about um, when's the, the right time to think about pulling the plug you know, yeah. which is not, not an article anybody ever wants to read, you know, right? Yeah. But, but I think there, there is a time to do that, but I think it should be way down the road yeah. because my experience with startup businesses is that there, there'll be many near-death experiences before you reach success yeah. um, for almost all startups. Almost every, even the most successful companies, Microsoft, everybody has these stories where, you know, if they wouldn't have been able to make payroll the next week or something if this didn't happen. So you've got to have enough blind faith in yourself and your idea to push through a number of those, right? So um, I, I think that there's, you, you know, being an entrepreneurial, uh, you know, this sounds kind of silly, but I'm not even sure it's really a rational act. You, you have to have a little bit of irrationality about you to really do it, to start a business, to compete against, you know, existing companies out there that have so many uh, advantages over you. So that would be one, don't give up. Um, the, the other thing is, and we've already discussed this a bit too, is um, seek help. Um, no one knows everything, okay, um, in any business, doesn't matter how smart you are, doesn't matter if you've done it two or three times before, this business that you're doing now is different. It's a different different time period, you know, markets change, uh, everything changes. So, you know, always be learning, as you said, and always be seeking help um, in, in some way, form or fashion from others. Um, and the third thing is that um, never get too comfortable, even when you're successful, because, you know, there's some somebody behind you that's trying to knock you off. So, you, a, a little bit of healthy paranoia is good in any business. Um, always be, you know, looking, you, you know, I'm, I'm at my roots, a marketing guy. And, you know, marketing is a very dynamic aspect to any business. No marketing program works forever. Things change. And so you always need to be looking at what's next and trying to get out ahead of it. So those would be the, if, if I had to boil it down to three, those would be three I'd give you. No, those are all fabulous tips, um, especially from someone that's been doing it for 20 plus years. Obviously, it's been working, right? Um, so I'm definitely going to use some of those tips. Thank you. <laughs> um, so running a, a business, um, small business, how has technology changed for the better um, for your business? And, you know, there's a lot of software out there um, as well as, you know, different devices, apps today. I mean, how has that helped you advance your business? Yeah, so I would say um, this is probably one of the greatest things that, that's happened in my career. Um, you know, um, if I would have started at the beginning of my career as a consultant, and, and even at the beginning of my career, um, you know, it would have been very, I, I do business worldwide, John. So I have, I have clients, have had clients in South Africa and the United Kingdom and, you know, uh, mostly throughout the country, but, but all over the world as well. And the, the point being is that, you know, a lot of times I'll have clients that I never even meet in person. Yep. So I've, I've had people that I've worked with for two years and, you know, video conference and phone. Um, 25 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do business that way. Um, you, you, just, you just really couldn't as nearly as effectively as you can today. So as a, a consulting business was by definition kind of local back then. So I would say it's allowed me to expand and focus on, you know, a more narrow uh, piece of business, which is the technology business, but a, more, a, but a much wider geographic focus. No, oh, that's great. Like using technology to your benefit, right? So like right. you mentioned, meetings and video and even email, like it's such a great 
way to communicate with people, right? Like before it was just phones and today that smartphone has so many abilities to download apps and, you know, you can upload everything from Slack groups to apps to drives to you name it, right? You, Absolutely. You can do so much uh, the power of technology and if you can use it to your benefit especially if you're a small business and you can look a lot larger than you really are right I mean, and that's that's the other aspect of course john is that it's really level the playing field for small businesses versus big businesses you know you're just uh your website can be just as good as you know large co large company a b or c if you want to make it so. So, um, you know, all those things are definitely levelers of the playing field to allow small businesses to compete. Yeah, and then in terms of uh, networking events, so are you a big component of live networking events or um, online, you know, groups and communities? Yeah, so I've evolved in that way over time. And, and I think that this is really, driven by your personality as much as anything. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to this. When I started, you know, as a consultant, that is kind of, you know, the, the um, general way that consultants would, would meet people would be to go to a lot of networking events. And I did a lot of that early in my career, but I found it kind of inefficient actually, because, you know, you're in a big room with a bunch of people and, you know, there may be 300 people and maybe there's three clients in there and trying to find them, you know, is hard, you know, and it's, and it's not necessarily fun, you know, for some people it would be, it depends on your personality. So I found it inefficient and not really well suited to my personality. So over time I've evolved to more of an online networker. I use LinkedIn very heavily. I've probably got 3,500 connections on LinkedIn and, uh, and, and, you know, lots of social media outreach, um, so I, I, I've evolved, um, and, and this is probably, you know, partially because the technology has evolved to allow it to happen, um, you know, over that time. But um, I think it also suits my personality better um, to, to, to really kind of, uh, I don't know, just be more broadly focused than, than narrowly focused on a, you know, a, a, a geographic area like yeah, I think it all depends, right? Because depending on what kind of business you are in, yeah, uh, it would depend. Like if you are servicing a local business, uh, geographic area, it makes sense to focus on community outreach, right? Um, Absolutely. Right. But if you are, there's no barriers, then look for your tribe. Look for where they are residing and play a part in it. Contribute content. Um, help others, right? And find out what there is a need for and fulfill that need right so um i i totally get it because even for myself i mean this the space that i'm in it's such a i would say cluttered space or people don't really understand what it is no. um, but they're sold it every single day right? right promised it so my my whole point is really to educate people and let them make their own decision but hopefully they're much more informed before right. they make a decision Absolutely. so um in terms of what drove you to become who you are. So um, I know right now you've been doing it for 20 years. Um, do you, is it the same sort of drive and passion that you have today or did it kind of change when you first started? Yeah, I think it's, it, it's ebbed and flowed over the years, right? You know, your passion, it's hard to have 100% passion consistently all the time. And I probably had some some dead periods early on where I you know, was kind of sick of doing what I was doing. But um, I, I always came out of that. And really, it, it's interesting you bring that up because I haven't felt that for a long, long time. So I think I, I just enjoy, uh, you know, what I'm doing. I enjoy the topics of, of, I enjoy technology, I enjoy marketing, I enjoy business management, I enjoy startups. But probably um, what keeps it fresh more than anything is my clients. I really enjoy interacting with my clients and meeting new people. And, and you know, that, that keeps everything fresh for me. So my passion is pretty consistent over the last 10, 10 to 15 years, I'd say. No, that's amazing because it seems like technology is changing so quickly. And for you, and you're dealing with startups and you're dealing with, you know, the latest marketing trends or, you know, SaaS business or tech tech business. I mean, you're on top of it and you need to be. So you need to stay informed and 
you know, the big thing is curiosity as well. So you're constantly um, learning and there's always new stuff. So there's never any boredom. And that's where MySpace comes in too, because Google is always coming up with more updates and Absolutely. figuring out why yeah. you're trying to beat them and rank yeah. them. Yeah. Like right. it's always a battle, right? Um, it is. Especially if you're going after so many different verticals and industries and niches. I yeah. mean, it's, it's fun, but it's also very stressful. But as long as you're enjoying it, I mean, yeah. just do the best I, you can. I think you hit on the, the key word that I would use there is that curiosity. I think that's what keeps you fresh and passionate about things. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, so what, what motivates you today? Like, like what excites you? What, what, is it still the learning, the curiosity? Part? Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, over time I've developed, um, you know, I would say my work ethic was probably pretty mediocre when I was young. And uh, I don't know what it is about. Uh, maybe it's running my own business, you know, nothing, you know, I don't, I can't feed myself unless I work hard. And, and so, you know, that, that probably, improve my work ethic by itself. Um, but um, I, what motivates me? I'm trying to go back to the question and make sure I answer it instead of <laughs> rambling. Um, I think I've developed kind of an attitude in life where I want to do the very best I can for my clients. And so when I'm working with one of my clients, a business, I treat it like it's my own business. And so that's one of the things I've missed as a consultant is kind of, you know, being inside a software or hardware company and, and driving it. Um, you know, that's one of the things you don't get. So I've kind of tried to adopt that attitude that even though I'm a consultant, you know, I'm here to help drive this business. And so that's probably, you know, I, I kind of inherit the passion of every one of my clients. I dive in with them and, and, and really kind of, adopt their passion for their business more or less that sounds a little odd i guess but but it's no the way it's, my mind works it's a good good mantra because what what i've always been saying to every new potential customer and customer is you know you don't need to know everything in terms of seo or anything digital because now i'm on your team i'm working with you you know, you can rely on me to resolve it. You can ask me any questions, but the big thing is, you know, someone's on with you in terms That's of right. making this become a successful campaign, right? Um, yes. Someone you can trust, right? Yes. So all these are really good points. Um, so aside from business, what other pillars um, are the, the pillars that you believe have molded you to become who you are? So um, family, health, community, like all these things aside from business, um, what makes you become who you are? And, um, you know, do you currently give back? What, where, where are you in terms of your life? Yeah. So, um, I think, you know, the things that have affected me are, you know, the, my son's, my son's illness had a, had a big impact on me. So, um, over the years, I've raised money for that cause. Uh, so that's part of my giving back. Had a, you know, was very, very active in, in raising money for uh, his specific illness. Um, that's probably one of the biggest influences. You know, I, I, you know, again, I go back to my parents. They were very family oriented. So family is a, is a big influencer. Uh, faith is also an influencer for me. So those are, those are kind of the main pillars that I would uh, base my, you know, being on is, is those things. Yeah. And I, I also want to mention, like, don't just focus on business because there's other things Absolutely. that you need to really refine and get better at, especially relationships, especially if you're married or you have family, don't lose sight on what's the most important thing of why you're in business in the first place. That's, right? that's very wise, John. I, I totally agree with that. Um, and, you know, especially people involved in small businesses or startups, it's very easy to get consumed by it and, and let it run your life or even ruin your life if you're not careful. So you, it's very important to step back and have, and have life away from it. Um, I think it makes you a better business man or woman um, because your head is clear when, when, when you're, when you're doing your, your business and it, and it gives you perspective too, which is also very important. Yeah. And I, I constantly self-reflect, right? So I always look back and I'm like, what's going to happen if I lose them? 
it's not a big deal. It's money, right? right? But do you want someone that's gonna run your life if that's the personality of you know that new client? So, you know, just reflecting and looking forward to why you're doing what you're doing, like so important. And I see so many of these new entrepreneurs spending a lot of time, which I did at the beginning as well. I sacrificed a lot of my social life, but I didn't have children back then. Right. So, but I was there present with my wife, right? right? But she was okay with me sacrificing some of my time to commit to the business. So the support aspect of reaching out, making sure that you're not alone, because it is a lonely space as an yes. entrepreneur, right? It's um, and there are people that are willing to give and help, right? As long as you let people know, because a lot of people don't even voice their concerns or you don't know, you have to pry it from them, right? Um, and that's what I learned as well. Like, you know, at the beginning, I was probably the same. I, I tried to do everything myself, which I could have saved months or years if I did reach out, right? So, um, you know, and... And just let people know what you're all about and what you're planning on doing, right? Um, because the people that do want to help are usually the ones that are doing fairly well or successful, right? So you kind of look up to them. And without asking, you don't know what they're going to say, right? And you're, so you're fear, fearful that you're, you have a bad question or you don't know how they're going to take that in, right? right. So um, yeah, definitely. I learned a lot over the years as well. So how is your son doing, by the way? He's, he's doing well. Um, you know, he's, he's very disabled, um, not physically, but, um, but he, we, we got through many of the challenges that we had um, early on in our life. So, um, you know, he's a happy guy and, you know, he's, he's doing well. Yeah. And I think raising someone that is, you know, with a disability, I mean, I look up to the parents because that is something that I would not ask for on anyone, right? But, right. you know, you just have to overcome it and you just got to do it for him, right? Or, or her, right? So, right. Um, yeah, I, I respect you completely because I know how difficult it is to raise a son or a, chi a child that has no disability. <laughs> so someone that that's does right. have a disability. That's right. It's, it's hard <laughs> enough without it. it, it without so, uh, so anything that's wrong. Um, yeah. So I'm going through, you know, fatherhood. I have a young uh, son. Um, but it's a lot of fun. So I'm actually embracing and being present as much as I can because um, these days and times and hours, you'll never take back. Right? Never get them back. That's right. That's and, very, very wise, John, to be, to be looking at it that way. Yeah. And I always look at it like, you know, I, it's great that I'm, I'm doing some of these interviews because I'm learning as much as I can um, because it's so insightful from people that I respect. Someone that's been in it for 20 years. I'm only in it for six, but I love what I do. So it does, it, like six years flew by and, and it only happens if you actually are enjoying what you're doing. That's absolutely right? true. So these 20 years have kind of flew by, I would imagine. They and, have. you know, now it's like, what more can I do? Right. And that's where I want inspiration to kind of see what can, what more can I really do to make an impact? Right. And help others because, that's what life is about. I get more of a, I guess, happiness when people write a testimonial or video testimonial about me versus, you know, the business, you know, I, I'm not too concerned about growing the business. I care about making an impact on whoever I'm trying to help. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I totally respect you for sure. So, um, so how can some of the listeners get a hold of you directly? Yeah, so I would say that the best way would be through my website. Um, so www.pjmconsult.com. There's a there's a you know a contact form up there, um, and that's probably the easiest thing to remember is just to go to the website and use the contact form, and that'll go directly to me. Um, I can also provide an email address or whatever else you'd like, but that that's probably the simplest thing to do. And they can also follow your social media handles. Yeah, so that's that's a good point. Thanks for that. So on Twitter, I'm Technology Guy. Um, uh, on LinkedIn, I'm just you know Phil Mortini and, and Facebook as well. So there are there are uh, LinkedIn and, and Facebook pages for PGM Consulting as well. So um, if you go to my website, you know there's there's links to all the all my social media uh, presence as well. 
Great. Well, thanks a lot, Phil. I really appreciate you giving a lot of insight for all these budding entrepreneurs listening. Um, and hopefully some of them learn a couple tips here and there, and they could utilize it to become successful like yourself. Um, but thanks a lot. I know you're a busy gentleman. Um, and I really appreciate you being on our show. John, thanks for the invitation. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.